This week I talk with legendary Saru actor Doug Jones and we take a look back at the chase that started it all. A new edition of The Ready Room starts right now. Hey nerds, I'm Will Wheaton, and this is The Ready Room, your official behind the scenes hub for the Star Trek universe. I am so excited to be back exploring the final season of Star Trek Discovery. A little later, we will chase down the ties between Discovery's story arc this season and a classic episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. You know that I love that. Of course, that will take us deep into spoiler territory, so I am going to call for a black alert. If you haven't jumped into the first two episodes of Star Trek Discovery's fifth season, grab a long lost relative, stream the episodes on Paramount Plus, and warp back here for all the deets. First, I am thrilled to be joined today by legendary actor Doug Jones, who plays Saru, to talk about what appears to be his character's final mission aboard the Discovery and the future of his relationship with the Vulcan Tarina. Control room, engage. Doug Jones, thank you so much for being here today. Will Wheaton, thank you so much for having me. It's always a treat to talk with you. The feeling is extraordinarily <laughs> mutual. It's Saru's farewell to Discovery. I know, this is uh, kind of surreal in a way, yeah. after living as Saru for many years now. <laughs> He's about to become an ambassador for Small Planets. Yes. That's pretty wonderful. That's really wonderful. And it's, it's, it feels very appropriate for Saru too. How do you feel as an actor about this chapter and this character? Uh, I'm gonna say the word bittersweet. It all yeah. runs together, but there are two parts. The bitter part is obvious. Yeah. I'm gonna miss Saru so much. He's been he's become a part of me, he really has. The sweet part is that <laughs> I don't have to walk in those hoof boots anymore, and the rubber came off the last time. I was like, oh, Maybe I can use my own face more now, yeah. you know? Uh, so there's, there's a, it's, a, it's both. One of the unexpected surprises for me uh, with Saru's journey was his relationship with Tarina. Ah, oh, wasn't that lovely? If part of the message of Star Trek is finding strength and beauty in the things that we have that make us different and mm -hmm. unique, I feel like their relationship kind of codifies that. As different as they are, they also have similarities too, which yeah. we really connect on a, a level of sense of duty. We mm -hmm. both have a very strong sense of that. And we have also both hold ourselves very prim and proper like. And by, by the end of season four, it all built up to us finally holding hands as we looked out a window on the ship. The fans went nuts for it. Thank you for that, by the way. And I went nuts for it too. That was, it was such a, there was so much packed into that handhold. We all tend to take things from our characters. We, we make contributions to our characters from our real life. Yeah. What are some things that you've learned from Saru that you feel comfortable sharing with me and the audience? Yeah, not just me, but a, a, lot of, a lot of the fandom out there too can relate to Saru's anxiety. He was born into fear. Uh, and this is how I started in season one, right? With the threat ganglia that would come out when he sensed danger or peril. That is how Doug Jones lived his life all the way up until now. Same. Okay, so Saru taught me, that he felt the same way. I understood Saru from the get-go. When the script came that my threat ganglia fell out and I went through this thing called Vaharai, where, right. where that's, that was just the first part of his life. Now, after adolescence, he lives a life of courage and confidence yeah. that I do not have personally. <laughs> it's like, okay, this is a shift. But what I learned- Now I'm acting. Now, now I'm acting. <laughs> but what I learned from this was that the world around Saru did not change, that we still face a peril through that front window of our bridge every day. <laughs> something is coming that, ah, we have to fix a problem or that society we have to help save or something. But what changed was Saru's reaction to it. So it's like if Doug Jones can do that in his own life and just flip his, his attitude about what's, what's outside the window. Have you encountered fans yes. that have reflected to yeah. you? Oh, many times. Oh, yeah. I had, you know, Saru was this, I was this. Yes. He did this, and I realized, wait, I can do that too. Have you had those conversations? I love hearing from, uh, from the, the audience. When, uh, when they'll tell me that, that I have dealt with anxiety or depression all my life and I, I have trouble leaving the house, that kind of thing, and how they have found comfort and inspiration in watching Saru on his journey. That's that incredible. We're not just entertaining, yeah. we also can, can, uh, can inspire. <laughs> One of the things that many fans absolutely love about Saru is the famous Saru Kelpian walk. Mm -hmm. And a little bit earlier today, <laughs> Doug endured trying to teach me how to walk like a Kelpian. Uh, 
You did great, Will. You did, you did, <laughs> well, you did fine. <laughs> let's let's reserve judgment. Check this out. Okay, so Will, uh, yep. the height we can't fix. No, we can't. Kelpian, part hoof animal and uh -huh. part sea animal. Right? Yes. So yeah, we want yeah. the hands to be like like fins floating like fins. in the water. Right? Feel so that. We're not gonna be flat footed here. We okay. have to go up on the balls of our feet. So our hips go a little bit forward. All right. Walk like a supermodel. Okay. Ready? Okay, yep. Here it goes. Right? Supermodel will. I don't know, I'm not feeling it. And we never disturb who we're walking past. Of course we don't. All right. Hips lead, right? Tall like a supermodel. Like a supermodel. That looks familiar. My mom's on that show. <laughs> ah, you do this while you're acting, and I'm like, okay, all I'm doing is walking. I'm just thinking about walking. Are my hands too big? I feel like my hands are a little too big. Supermodel. By the way, your abs are gonna look like mine when this is done. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Now, as a Kelpian and lift, the yes. turbo lift. Yeah, yeah. Hang on to something. Okay, I got okay. it. And here and we go. Here we go. We are walking to the right, to the right. And as we're walking, we can also gesture to our boss. My calves have some notes and my thighs have some comments. Welcome to my world. You did great, Will. I love Action Saru. Oh gosh. <laughs> In this episode, we see him at his ultimate Mm. Most action-y, mm. action Saru. Now, I have to read this because I cannot believe that this is a true fact. My card says that you went on, quote, a magic carpet ride in the jungle to help Saru reach his action peak. Please tell me what that means. I think my stunt double was heavily involved with this. I don't okay. want to take credit where it's not due. That's fair. Well, let me give a shout out to my stunt double, Boston Camillari. The magic carpet ride, I believe, was a belt that was on the ground yeah. that helped him run faster. So, so he- Like uh, those movie walkers at the airport? Yes. They had some kind of a, of a pull thing that I never was on yeah. because they didn't want to have me break a hip and then I had <laughs> the show's sure. over. This season seems to be tied into the chase mm -hmm. from the next generation. I love that it's a uh, big question that's being asked is where did we come from? Mm -hmm. You know, what- what created us. And so, uh, so this, this, ep this season really explores that and wants to seek answers for that. I've always thought that when science fiction is working at its absolute peak, it functions as wonderful entertainment and deep philosophical exploration. Deep philosophical, right, right, right. So we're happening this year. And I think we get, <laughs> we get, well, I know, we get a lot of that this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this season continues a storyline that started back uh, in TNG. So here is a look at this season's ties, right back to that episode. Season five is an adventure. Jean-Luc Picard found a message left by a race of ancient beings. It's set up really nicely with the first episode, and it continues from there for sure. We've been calling them the progenitors. You're wondering who we are, why we have done this. On the chase, the symbolism of all the next-gen enemies possibly getting along, they took and expanded on for season five of Discovery. So I'm, I was glad to revisit it. What we find is that there's this technology that we now have to rescue. This technology was found by Captain Jean Picard. When we started talking about season five, the progenitors was just kind of one of the first places we went to as an idea that we had that we didn't get to explore that we had really wanted to. I found myself reviewing that same hologram in my quarters as well. And The Chase, which is just this wonderful episode, and getting to go and fill in the blanks of what happened after that? What happened after Picard and this group of people saw this video, essentially, of the being that created them all? Remember us. The Chase was one of my favorite episodes in TNG, and it was just one of those episodes that got me thinking of life and how life propagated throughout Earth and, and possibly throughout the solar system. I get what Michelle was thinking, that there's a world where hopefully all these species can get along. And maybe there's a world where not only can they get along, they, they can share their beliefs. I think the world is bigger than our own corner of it. I am someone who really loves Easter eggs. And something that I like about this season is the fact that it is full of them. And you can kind of appeal to both sides of our fandom with that, both the people who've been watching forever and the people who've maybe just started with Discovery. 
I'm especially excited about the ways that we connect to the history always, but in this case, Dr. Aaron McDonald and Dr. Mohammed Noor, who are scientists who consult on our show, I've been to their lectures, and one of the lectures I've been to, they talked about the progenitors. So to get to then see that trace through our show in such a meaningful way is really cool. Next Gen was my, that was my Star Trek. You know, that was my introduction to Star Trek and the universe. It was really informative to me as a young person in terms of my own values and the kind of world that I wanted to help build. So for us to wink and nod and reach out to the next gen story feels right for me. It feels like, oh, I'm coming home. Hmm. Wow, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love the canonical suggestion that life was seeded throughout our universe by these progenitors, whoever they may be, mm -hmm. and they kind of created life in their image. Did not Gene Roddenberry have a, have a rule, two eyes, two ears for every alien? That sounds like a Gene rule. Uh, and that makes sense now, too, yeah, with this, with this storyline. Of course, yeah. That's beautiful. I'm going to talk a little bit about Saru's arc over the run of five years, and there's so much that I'm going to have to there's read. There's a lot of arc there. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> he's frenemies with Michael Burnham. Mm -hmm. He learns the truth about the Ba'ul. Mm -hmm. He helps his people overcome fear and oppression. Come I mean, on now, come on now. Yeah, like really. Like, <laughs> right. Would you like to just pick out and highlight a couple along the way mm. that are meaningful to you that maybe the audience doesn't know about. Uh, I'm gonna go back to season two for one of these moments okay. when Saru thought he was dying yeah. and he was actually going through Baharai. That was a gorgeous moment that I got to share with Burnham. She was the one that I wanted to come into my quarters with me when I thought it was over. Can you do the mercy killing for me with that, the Kelpian knife? And she was like, the two of us that day, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna tear up thinking about it. We were both just emotional wrecks. We'd both been crying all day doing every angle of this scene, right? So right. we had that like, my, uh, my forehead is tight and sore from all this crying. Yeah. And with she and I, we kind of played surrogate brother and sister for each other on the show mm -hmm. at each other's throats at the beginning yeah. and then getting, gaining a respect for each other and a true deep love for each other as the show progressed. It's really special. We didn't want it to end. We didn't want it to end. Yeah. Uh, Star Trek Discovery's final season is just getting started. Here is a sneak peek at next week's episode titled Janal. Check this out. Welcome. Kalzara is eager to meet you. You knew the answer. Yes, we are here for the clue. We understand you have it. I have been waiting for you nearly my whole life, but I cannot help you. Only Janal can. The original host? Didn't he die hundreds of years ago? Janal joined with our symbiont so that it could carry his secrets across the ages until a worthy seeker arrived. He requires that you speak with him directly. Please. The symbiont is tired and longs to rest. So do I. How are we supposed to do this? A Shantara. It's a ritual that allows Janal's consciousness to transfer to another body for a limited time. It cannot be a joined host, but others from your team may serve as a vessel. I hate that we're at the end. I do too. Do you want to talk about your place in the Star Trek universe? Oh, good gosh. Well, uh, I think uh, it, 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 the word family keeps coming to mind. And the family does not just keep to our, our cast on our show and our crew on our show. It does, as you say, extends throughout the entire franchise, that family. And it extends beyond that to the fandom. Yeah. Those who have kept us uh, employed all these years are the people watching the shows and the movies. That is a family. It's been so wonderful talking to you all these seasons. Yeah. Thank you for all of your contributions on Star Trek Discovery. Everyone hopes Doug Jones is gonna be this cool, <laughs> kind, gentle man, and you just are, and oh. I, I'm grateful for that. Well, bless you for thinking so, and, and you too. You're, no one could do this show like you can. Next week, we will dig deeper into the mystery of Janal with my special guest, Dr. Culber himself, Wilson Cruz. Until then, I'm Will Wheaton. Live long and prosper.